very first time this class is being offered. And as you can see, we have a small class. And I think that works to your advantage. We can really work to uh, do whatever we need to do. If we need to go to lab to work on stuff, if we need lecture, if you need individual attention, we can do what you need to uh, so you're successful in this class. So uh, I'm excited about it. Uh, like anything new, this isn't a class I've taught a million times. So um, you know, I'm working through some of the material myself. And I'm, I'm working through the way the class is going to be structured myself. So I'm taking a shot of it and, and going forward. The good news is as guinea pigs, you know, you get a chance to shape the way the class is going to be structured. And you can get some good individual attention. Um, the good news for me is if I really mess up, there's only a couple of you that are going to know. So <laughs> that, that, that's an advantage to that. Let me start by taking attendance. And I think I know everyone here. But we'll see when I see the names on the list. By the way, if you haven't noticed, the class is being recorded. There's a little thing up here. I'm recording the class. And the videos from the class will be posted to YouTube. Um, it is not quite as good as, as when I have them recorded in 105. In 105, they kind of have a professional all big setup and all that. But this is good at the very least if you have to miss a class, if you have the flu or whatever, and you miss a class, at least there's, there's something um, for that. And I will post the classes to Angel and, uh, or actually to YouTube, and then I'll post a link to them to, to Angel. Um, disadvantage with this, this being only one camera, you know, it's going to be a very exciting video of a whiteboard while with me, with, with my voice talking. So, um, hopefully, we'll live things. The There's a camera up there. There's no camera for this one. So the camera is like taking, you can even see it's taking a picture of the board. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll draw a picture to make it more interesting. That way, there'll be at least something for folks to look at. And it's amazing, too. I, I get feedback from literally people around the world that, that somehow come across my videos and, and watch them. So more power to them. All right. I'm going to say we have and I would have known this anyhow, but we have Carol. All right. We have Joe in the back, Joey. And we have David. Yep. All right. There, there's supposed to be another person here, but I didn't think you were that person. Can someone show up and then duck back out? I don't know if she's coming back or not. Uh, probably the wrong class because it does not appear to be a she. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've had people popping in and out of my classes. You know, my, well, I only had one. As I say, classes all day. I've only had one other class today. But I've had people popping in and out of those. I must have given three or four people directions to where they need to go. So it, it'll take a while. Um, and it's weird because I've had people like walk in like the last five minutes of the class like getting there early for the next class it's like don't you know you're supposed to wait out in the hall until the class is done to come in you know isn't that a skill they teach in high school you know i i don't think that's a college specific thing you know that you don't go into one class until the uh, but what, what, what do i know here's what we're going to do today uh today we are going to just review the general class outline, all right? And then we will have an overview of the class, OK? I talked to you in Dennis Ryan's class, didn't I? Correct. OK. All right, now, now I've made the connection in my head. All right, uh, we're going to give an overview of the class. And um, then uh, we will get into sort of an overview of the course. Uh, today's class will sort of present, or present rather, just a, a grand overview of everything 
really everything dealing with mobile software development and then honing in on the, the web application part of it. So let's start um, by going into Angel. I'm assuming everyone is familiar with using Angel. Is that correct? So I won't really go into details about that. I'll focus on what is there. And what is there is a couple things that are relevant. There is a syllabus for the course. There is a note about copyright and fair use, which is, if you've had me in other classes, I've gone over this, but I do like to mention this every term. Um, there is a folder for assignments, and then there's a discussion forum. As the course proceeds, there'll be additional stuff added to ANGEL. There will be examples, videos from the class, and so on. So I'm not going to go over everything um, in great detail. Uh, I trust that you can, before next class, read through the materials and, and let me know if you have any questions. But I do want to hit sort of the high points of this. And we'll do this from, from the bottom up, all right? Discussion forum is a place where you can ask questions between class, between classes, all right? There's a lot of ways that you can that, that you can get help from me or get assistance in this class. You can certainly ask questions of me um, in lab or during lecture. Um, you can visit me during office hours. You can um, send email, either regular email or through Angel. Either one's okay. The discussion forum is another means of doing that. Think of the discussion forum is when you're going to ask a question that you think would be relevant to more than one person in the class. In other words, if you have a question specific to your homework assignment, there's one thing that you're just struggling with that you think is specific to your project, um, then it might be better to send it via email. If, however, you have a question that you think is beneficial to everyone in the class, then by all means, post it via the discussion forum and I'll answer it there. All right. In addition, a couple other things that you can do is you are welcome to sit in on any of my other classes' labs. Okay. Um, I have uh, Monday through Thursday, I have both a day class and an evening class. So you're welcome to sit in any of the other labs that I have. So lab starts immediately after class. So in this class, it starts at 630. It also, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, it starts at 630. Uh, on Mondays and Wednesdays, it's at 10 a.m. And I'm not sure when my, well, I know when my evening lab is. No, I don't know when my Tuesday and Thursday day lab is. I think that's like noonish. The bottom line is if you want to take that option, let me know, and, and I'll point you in the right direction of, of what room you have. Um, my goal is to make it so that if you have a question, there's any number of different ways that you can ask it to me. And if you're running into difficulties in this class, you know, look around. If you have a question, that's 25% of the class. All right. Not to even mention the fact that maybe someone else has that question, but doesn't, you know, is too shy to, to ask it. All right. So if you have a question, that constitutes a substantial portion of the class. So ask away. Ask in lecture, ask in lab. Um, I may, depending on the circumstances, defer to discuss it in lab. Like if you were to ask me a question that I'd really need to see the code to look at or whatever, then I might say, yeah, let's talk about that in lab. Or I might not give you a direct answer, all right? Uh, I might try to nudge you in the right direction so you discover the answer yourself, but by no means should you be discouraged from asking questions. That's the, the real plus of having a class this small, is I try to do it in all my classes. In this class, hey, really, there's, you know, really... No excuse for there not to be a dialogue between me and you um, as far as the course material. So the discussion forum is just one of the ways that you can contact me. There's all those other ways as well. All right. The assignments.
the assignment folder, there'll be a Dropbox for each assignment. This assignment is pretty straightforward. Right. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, you certainly, today at least, could do some Googling for responsive web design and find out some materials about that, as well as there are uh, there is information about it in the book. So you can get a start researching this, um, even if you're not sure all the things that you need to do to code uh, a page uh, in that manner. All assignments need to be turned in through the Dropbox. On, on occasion, if you um, are having difficulty uploading it, um, I don't think we'll run into that so much in this class, but in some of my other classes, for large assignments, the files are too big to upload via Angel or, or something like that. I do insist that you upload something to Angel. So even if you bring in, you know, let's say you, you, know, you burned a CD with your assignment and bring, brought it in, I do request that you put something in the Dropbox saying, hey, I turned it in via CD. All right? That's the only way I can keep track of assignments that come in. Is, is by looking through the Dropbox. So even if you, you know, even if you email it to me or whatever, there has to be something in the Dropbox to guarantee that you'll get the, the credit that you deserve. Is that Dropbox capable of taking a whole folder of JPEGs and CSSs? And um, I, I don't remember the, uh, I don't remember the, uh, the limit to it, uh, the, the size and number of bytes uh, that it is. But yeah, uh, unless you get crazy, it, you know, for the purposes of this, yeah, it should. Especially given in this class, we're going to, my aim, my strategy is going to have uh, smaller frequent assignments as opposed to like a couple of gigantic assignments. So each assignment should be pretty little and, and therefore it should do. Your best bet is to zip things up um, and put it, to, you know, create a folder for each assignment, zip up the folder, and then upload the folder. And if you have any questions how to do that, I can walk you through that process. All right, copyright and fair use in education. All right, this is a handout that I've prepared. And it uh, is meant to address the issue of are you allowed to take material off the web, specifically images, probably for the most part, and use them in your projects. Certainly you're not permitted to do that in other circumstances. If you had a company, if you had a sporting goods company, for example, you couldn't go to the Cleveland Browns website and take a picture off of their website and put it on, on your sporting goods company's site. All right, that, that's copyright infringement. All right? In fact, legally you can't even do that if it's not a commercial, if it's, if it's a, uh, a personal site. Like let's say you're, you know, you're a hobbyist you know, a, a fan of football and you want to create a Cleveland Browns tribute site, you, strictly speaking, are not allowed to go and just take an image off of their site and use it. That also is copyright infringement. However, given that we are in an educational context, the, the, the rules are a little more flexible. So um, this document here sort of summarizes those. And, and I use this for all of my classes, so some of these things might be less relevant than others. But the bottom line for this is, first of all, this applies only in an educational context. So don't think this is the rule if you're creating a personal site or a, a commercial site. Um, secondly, there's limits to what you do. Even if you are doing an educational site, for example, you can't take any more than five images per artist. Or you can't take more than 10% or 30 seconds of a music clip, for example. And the last thing, of course, is that you need to give credit, just like you would give credit if you quoted a book in a term paper that you write. You would need to give credit if you are using an image off of some other website uh, in your work. My, uh, one second. My point isn't to be like a real stickler on copyright and, and, and be nitpicking and all that. My, uh, my intent is that, that we respect copyright and we pay attention to it and we do our best you know, not to. Feel free to ask questions. Go ahead. Oh, sure. Uh, I know some of us haven't been in the graphics program. Well, do you want references 
services, even if we have uh, our own generated material or royalty-free stuff. Like I said, I'm looking at this from yeah, graphics program. Uh, it, it probably would be good somewhere to mention it to me. So, for example, if you took an image, let's say of a, of a, you know, of a, the college, for example, the college courtyard, and you developed a mobile page for that. Um, at the very least, when you upload it, say, "Hey, I, I'm the copyright holder of the image." You know, so you don't, you know, if you don't want to clutter your page with uh, with the credit, you could, if you wanted to, you could put a credit saying "copyright your name here," um, or you could just in the Dropbox just indicate that. So yeah, it's probably a good idea just just so I know that hey, you're paying attention to that, and you just didn't go off of Elsie's website and find an image somewhere. All right. Last but not least is the syllabus. One thing to mention is this is a bit odd of a class in so far as it starts at 5.15. Right, it's kind of a, a, an odd time for a class to start. Usually classes start on the hour. This one starts at 5.15. Part of the reason for that is just with the scheduling and all that, this is actually a four credit hour class, all right? Uh, which means that we have a slightly longer lecture than we have in a three credit hour class. Uh, typically, in a three credit hour class, we have a 50 minute lecture and a 50 minute lab, um, two of those per week. In uh, a four credit hour class, we have an hour 15 lecture and then we have a 50 minute lab. So we, we have lecture from 5.15 to 6.30, all right? Then we have lab immediately following from 6.30 to 7.20. All right, the syllabus. All right. There's information about how to contact me. I do list my phone number there. It is probably better to uh, visit me, or I'm sorry, not visit me, uh, to email me as opposed to calling me on the phone. Um, just that the, the uh, emails I answer pretty faithfully, whether they're sent through Angel or through LC's email account, I do a pretty good job answering those. Whereas the phone messages, I typically only listen to my phone messages when I'm on campus. So I, I typically uh, handle the emails more frequently. And it's, it's preferred for me. You know, I have a document that reminds me that I need to contact someone back or something like that. Um, office hours to be determined, and they'll be effective next week. No office hours during the first week. I'm not sure why they do that, but I guess I could have office hours, but um, we don't have to declare our office hours till after the first week. I think they want to ease us into the semester, probably, or not. I don't other times are by appointment. Again, um, me and I think most instructors here um, are willing to meet you halfway. All right. In other words, if my office hours are such that you can't get to me during those and you want to talk to me at some other time, the first course would be to see if you could come in during one of my other classes' labs. All right. If you still couldn't do that, then we'll arrange for some other time. All right, just talk to me and we'll figure out a time that's mutually uh, agreeable. All right, next two pieces deal with the course and contain a description of the course as well as the outcomes. And really, just about everything in this class we have should be centered on these outcomes, you know. This is what, when we design a class, we've documented this is what we want students in this class to know. So keep this as sort of uh, a way to keep your eyes on, on the goal. These are the goals of the class to be able to do these things. And really everything that we do in this class should relate one way or another to these goals. All right? I even say at some point, if I am talking about something that doesn't relate to those, you're welcome to ask me who cares about that. All right? uh, I don't know how I'll respond. Um, I have had one or two students do that, and I don't remember how I respond. I probably laughed and said, well, you're right, it's not really relevant, but I'm having fun talking about it, so 
will continue to do so. All right. <coughs> the book for this class is the Head First book. Uh, I love the Head First books. Uh, for the longest time, I used it in the web development class. I've actually switched books um, in that class. Um, but uh, I use it in the Java class, and I've used other ones just not even in class, but just for, for personal, personal uh, reading. And I think they're a good series of books. So um, this one seems to be another, another good book, and, 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 and I think you'll like it. All right. Other thing to keep in mind is that you do need some storage media if you're going to work on the machines in lab. In other words, the machines in lab um, have a software uh, installed called Deep Freeze, which means that if the machine reboots, it wipes the hard drive and starts with a fresh copy. Now, that's very useful, like in, in like people downloading viruses. It doesn't really, you know, they don't really stick, you know, and for, for other sorts of things. But it does have the unfortunate impact that if you bump the power switch, you know, you bump the little cord cable underneath there, which is usually my favorite thing to do. You know, you accidentally step on the button. Or, or if there's a power shortage in, in, in the lab. Or if, uh, and this has happened too, if the clock is set incorrectly and the automatic reboot that kicks in 2 in the morning kicks off during class, any of those things will cause the machine to shut down and you, you've lost your work. So it's a good idea to work off of a thumb drive that way. You know, you could work on the desktop and then copy it, but I've had students forget to do the copy when they're done. So it's probably best to work off of a, a thumb drive. There are other alternatives if you don't have one. If you don't have one, you should. I mean, they're pretty cheap. You can get one pretty cheap. But if you don't have that, um, um, then you can like email it to yourself or you can post it to Angel. I can't believe I have not edited out diskettes. At least it doesn't say like, you know, five and a quarter inch diskettes, eight inch diskettes, three and a half inch diskettes. Wow. Why is it like when I prepare these? I never notice that. And then the first time that I do, probably because this is copied and pasted from the first syllabus I did here. And it's just, you know, every, it's organically grown around it, the rest of this. But anyhow, um, don't bring the skits in. Unless you want to do it ironically. Like, uh, you know how people have the lanyard with the USB drive? I saw someone a few years back with, had one of those with a diskette on the end. I thought that was, pre I thought that was pretty cool, actually. <laughs> That's styling. Yeah, that was styling. <laughs> Instructor's approach. And you can multiply this by 10 in this class, given the size of the class. This is your class, all right? Um, my only job is to help you learn the material. Um, given that it's such a small class, we can afford to be more interactive, and you can get some individual attention in lab and, and in lectures. Um, and that's all I can say. You can read the rest of the... The, the spiel here. I do suggest you to uh, check Angel between uh, class sessions, you know, at least a couple times between class sessions for a variety of reasons. First of all, I'll post any class announcements uh, to Angel, like um, if, I, if I knew I was going to be, uh, if I'm ill a certain day and I'm not going to be in class, I'll, I'd post that there. Or if I'm giving an extension on homework. Or if someone asked me a question that I didn't quite know the answer of, and I said, well, let me look into that, and I'll get back to you. So all those things are things that reasons that, that I, I might post an announcement or some materials to Angel between classes. So, so check on at least a couple times between, you know, maybe sometime Tuesday, you know, between Monday and Wednesday, and maybe a couple of times between Wednesday and the following Monday. In addition, uh, that's how you turn in the materials, and that's how you get your feedback. From me is, is I, I send a message via Angel, and you can see um, you know what grade you got on the assignments, and you can you can see um, you know what my feedback is. In many cases, I give you the opportunity to rework an assignment if it isn't up to snuff. All right, you know I, I guess my rationale behind that is if you think if you were on a job and your job was to create a web page that did something, all right, if 
you created that web page and turned it into your boss and it didn't do that something, your boss isn't going to look at you and say, oh, okay, fine, well, here, here's your next assignment to do. Right? Your boss is going to say, oh, no, fix it. It doesn't do what it's supposed to do. You know, do what you need to do to make it work. And it, it, it push it back to you and you need to do the revision. So I adopt sort of that same attitude here. Um, I, I don't want you just to complete the assignments. I want you to do a good job on the assignments. So therefore, if there's something small wrong or even if there's something fairly large wrong, you know, for the most part, you will get an opportunity to rework that. That, uh, unfortunately, towards the end of the semester becomes um, a bit of an issue because I don't have the opportunity, you know, with, with the semester coming to a close, I can't give the opportunities to rework stuff. But early on in the semester, especially while you're working through this stuff, um, is, um, you know, that, that practice will be in effect. Here are some general things. Um, that may or may not be relevant to you. These are just general policies about, you know, the, the Department for Special Needs, academic dishonesty. You can read through these on your own. Late work. Um, I, I tend to be fairly flexible as far as late work goes, but I do reserve the right to deduct. Um, and I am more inclined to deduct if I haven't been working with the person on the assignment. So, for example, if an assignment is due and I have not seen you in lab and I have not talked to you about it and I've not gotten an email, I'm less likely to, uh, or, or I'm sorry, I'm more likely to deduct points for it than if we've been working on something all along and you've been sending me emails and it's due tonight and I can see in lab that it's almost there and then you turn it in on Wednesday. All right, so just work with me. That's all I ask. There's really no excuses in a class as small for, for uh, us not to, to, to be able to work together uh, in a good way. Here's what I'm going for for the grading. And I try, I'm try, I try different things in different classes because I'm never convinced that there's one perfect way to do things. And, so in some classes I do one thing, in some classes I do others. In this class, there will be 14 weekly homework assignments. So that's almost one a week. It's 15 weeks in a semester. Um, really the only week in which an assignment isn't due is this week. But every following week, every subsequent week, there'll be an assignment due. So the idea is, is we make the assignment this week, it's due next week. And then week two, we make an assignment that's due on week three, and so on down the line till we hit the end of the semester. There will also be three quizzes. All right. What will those quizzes consist of? That's a real good question. I don't have any idea at this point. Uh, by the time that you have your first quiz, I will decide what the quizzes look like. But I think it's important for you to get, get feedback, and, and I don't know, you know, uh, the, the stigma of a test and a midterm and all that, I think increases people's anxieties, yet there's still some things that I might want to know how well you have uh, gotten and how well you understand it that I can't necessarily tell from your coding, all right? Some things I can tell from your coding. There's some things I can't tell. For example, we're going to talk about different strategies for developing mobile websites. And as always, there's several alternatives. You know, there's never just one way to do something, right? There's always a couple alternatives. I want to make sure you understand, like, when one alternative would be appropriate and when another alternative might be appropriate. Well, I can't tell that from your coding, right? Your coding, if I ask you to code a web page that does something, you could do it without understanding when it's the best time to do that, right? So the coding skills are one part of it, but an understanding of like when you would do something a certain way is something that I can't really tell from your coding. So I, I, 